Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to r slash I don't work here lady. Where Karen threatens an employee, but in the end gets a restraining order. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody who's supporting me, especially the people that stick with me from the beginning. As long as you guys are watching, I will continue making videos. But now let's dive right in. One of my few nice stories from my retail days. So not sure if this belongs here, but it is honestly one of my favorite stories to tell. A few years back, I worked in a large retail chain, I won't name it, for obvious reasons, but the main thing you need to know is, I am a young female and I wore a standard all black uniform, pants and a jumper. If you have any idea which retail chain she is talking about, let us know in the comments. Our story takes place during my lunch break, where I was wearing the all black uniform on my break in another shop. I was browsing in a clothes shop getting ready to head back to work as I did pretty regularly, when I hear just about the cutest voice speak up to me. Hi, excuse me, hi. I look down trying not to laugh because it was such an adorable voice and then I see two little girls look back at me, both under the age of 7 if I had to guess. So I say, hey, are you okay? And the older girl replies, no, we are lost. So me being 19 at the time and never dealing with something like this before, think, oh god, what do I do then? I realize they think I work here, which is weird, because the staff in this shop don't wear a uniform, but a 5 year old did not notice, I guess. So I realize they want me to call their mom over the intercom. I ask who they came with and they say their cousin, the younger girl then says some things, but all I can remember now is she stated her cousin was not an adult, she's only a teenager, which made me feel even worse for the poor cousin who is probably frantically looking for these two little cuties. I then quickly try to explain to them that they did the right thing by coming up to me and not leaving the shop and that it would be okay not to worry, etc, etc. I tell them I don't work there and their little faces are blank, but I tell them I will stay with them until we find someone to help. Then I am rushing to find someone who actually worked there and was now 5 minutes late to go back to work. Once I did, I explained what happened and the staff member was freaked out, but said he would look after it. Unfortunately, I had to leave pretty quickly, but I said my goodbyes to the girls and left them with staff. I came back later in the day and was told they were okay, that their cousin was found within a few minutes and everyone and everything was fine. Yeah, if only Karen could be as polite as these two little girls. I suppose in a sense they are more mature than Karen's. Call center fun. I work in an inbound call center, so for all intents and purposes, when you call us, we are the company, unless extremely provoked we will admit we are a third party, whom takes messages, orders and contact engineers etc. We take calls for 100s if 1000s of clients, all of them are scripted and we have general knowledge of some accounts. Others, barely anything, but as of yet I've only taken a few calls where someone has called me out on not working for the company. So I'm working my usual shift, it's coming up to 19 o'clock, a call drops in and I say the opening line on the script. Hello, this is XYZ company, Muff Muncher speaking, how can I help you? Gentlemen, you can help me by taking me off your mailing list. Me? I do apologize sir, but we are the order and payments line, you would have to call the customer services between... Gentlemen. No, you can transfer me now. Me? Unfortunately, sir, the customer services closed at 17 o'clock, but they will be available at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Gentlemen. No, your company has been harassing me with your marketing for weeks. You will remove me now or I will report you to information authority. Me? Like I said, sir, I'm the order and payments line. I don't have access to remove you from any marketing, but if you send us an email or call tomorrow or send us a message through the website, I'm sure customer services will be... Gentlemen. Listen here, girly, I've already spoken to Josh. And he said he would get my details removed and I'm still getting them, so you will do as I say now. Me? Okay, sir, what I can do is, if you give me your details, I will escalate them through my manager to the customer service to investigate this and we can... Gentlemen. What is your name? Screeching at this point. Me, Muff Muncher. Gentlemen. And your surname? 
Me, my initial is J for Juliet. Gentlemen, know your name. Me, unfortunately, we don't give surnames in this office. If it's not scripted, I ain't telling ya. Gentlemen, where are you based? Me, I'm in the Hammersmith office. Gentlemen, so you don't work for XYZ company because they are based in Quebec. So you're a scam company who has taken my details. I want your name and your manager's name and I will report you to the police. Me? Sir, I can get my manager on the phone, but we do work for XYZ company as the order and payments line. Gentlemen. You deaf witch. You listen to me now. Me? Sir, if you continue to use that language, I will have to terminate the call. Gentlemen. It's your job to solve my issue. You best damn well get your manager on the phone and I'm recording this call to hand into the marketing authority and making a claim against you. I'm immediately taken aback by this. Me, all of our calls are recorded, sir, and you're making a claim against myself specifically. Is that what you're stating? Gentlemen. Yes, so give me your details. Me, okay, so my name is Muff Muncher, my surname is Juliet, and now if I could take your details so I can escalate this through to our... Sometimes it's best to just give in. De-escalating is something we are trained to do. Gentlemen. Now you have to listen to me, Muff Muncher. You're going to get my details removed, I'm going to sue you and XYZ Company and report you for harassment. Me? Again, sir, if you use language like that, I will have to terminate the call. And if you don't give me your details, I won't know which details I need to request to be removed. Gentlemen. You have my details, you cretin. Me? Terminating the call? Click. He called back several times to my colleagues quoting my name, asking to speak to my manager and make a formal complaint. We had to eventually bite the bullet and state that we were a third party, we take calls for XYZ company and reiterate exactly what I had already told to him. A few days go by and we get an email from XYZ company saying the crazy gentleman had written in with my details and had stated that he wanted my personal details, so he sent them to the marketing authority for breach of data protection laws. They sent a picture of the letter they returned. She doesn't work here. Not gonna lie, it's kind of hilarious that this guy accuses that woman of stealing his info, but he is the one who called her. But anyway, have you guys ever had to deal with these obnoxious advertisement companies or whatever they are that call on your landline and try to sell you some stuff or try to push you to make a survey? I gotta say, those calls are much less frequent nowadays than they were in maybe the early 2000s. But tell us your experience with them in the comments. Listen, I'm going to get you fired and make sure you never have a job. Let me introduce the characters of my interesting meeting with a very entitled lady. The cast is me and EL entitled lady. PE poor employee that somehow lived through this. PM poor manager that called it a Tuesday. So let me begin. This happened back in the year 1999 and I was 19 years old in the army and I looked nothing like an employee at this local Walmart. So I had just gotten my very first career job, which is the army, and back then I was excited about being in the army, and with that said, I was able to rent my own place and was stoked at being a real adult. Or so I thought. So when I finally got to leave to go on vacation, or leave as they call that in the military, I decided to head to Walmart and buy a bed and a TV, so I could just chill out in my place with my own rules. So dressed in my PT uniform, I went to Walmart and as I was walking up and down the aisles, this older lady asked me for a bit of help to load a microwave into her cart. Being the totally nice guy I am, I said, no problem. That was mistake number one. Mistake number two was, I told her to have a good day. As I returned to my mission, someone, EL, tapped on my shoulder and immediately she demanded I get her something off the shelf. The only reason I said no was because she snapped her fingers at me like I was some kind of servant. I told her no and went on about my business. Mistake number three. She started up a huge storm of cussing at me and telling me I don't belong in her country anyways. For context, I am very dark brown and my hair is straight, a lot of people think I am Mexican or from the Middle East. I am not, I am half black and white. Anyways, as she is screaming at me and I am simply tuning her out. 
which in my retrospect I should have told her to stop, this PE shows up and she's instantly her next target. This EL ripped into this poor girl who was seconds from crying. Again I step in and tell her that she's a rude little person, I was a bit more colorful but I'm keeping this post PG-13 and just as I finish my tirade of telling her off, in steps this PM. Again the lady goes into graphic detail how I called her a string of bad words and she wanted me fired. The PM looks at me and I assume he's ex-military and says, Madam, he doesn't work here and he's clearly in the army, hence the words on his clothes. She turns bright red with anger or embarrassment and after about 25 seconds of silence she looks me in the eye and says she wants my boss's number so she can get me fired etc etc. I obliged and gave her my captain's number. Then she says, Once I learn your name, I'm going to make sure you never get a job in this state again. I nearly died from laughing. I walk away thinking it's over and boy was I wrong. It ended up being funny as hell but just wow. About 4 days later after this, I have kind of forgotten about the whole ordeal at first, I then get a call from my CO asking for me to see him as soon as possible. I get down to his office when blow me over the EL is in his office saying Yes, that's him, now fire him. My CO has her leave so I can tell my half this ended up being like a 3 day investigation. The only reason why so long is because they needed footage from that Walmart which clearly show I did nothing wrong. So a day or so later it's me, my CO and the EL sitting in his office. He explains that not only was I not getting punished but we have requested a restraining order against the EL. She lost her mind and was escorted off base. Luckily for me I have yet to run back into her. Karen be like, I will never shop in this army base again. You lost a good customer. What I'm wondering about is, did OP made a mistake by giving her the CO's contact info? Because generally speaking, wouldn't his real boss, so to say, be the president of the United States? Correct me if I'm wrong. The tall man in a nice suit is not an ATF agent. This is my father-in-law's I don't work here story but I will relate it as best as I can from how he told it to me. My father-in-law, FIL, is a VP at a regional bank and is nearing retirement. He and my mother-in-law live pretty far out of the city and commute into the city daily for work. He says he can only play just so much golf because of his arthritis so he's looking for other hobbies to fill his time in retirement. He's an avid hunter, particularly of birds, pheasant, ducks, geese and is involved with conservation clubs for some of those. That is how we came to know Michael. Michael, as well as being a member of the duck conservation group, is also the president of a private shooting club that recently relocated from a plot of land close to the city to a plot close to my in-law's house. Michael gave my father-in-law his business card for the shooting club and invited my father-in-law to come by and see if he would consider becoming a member. So one day last spring my father-in-law takes up Michael on the offer calling to ask if a midweek evening would be alright for a tour of the club. That works for Michael and my father-in-law is told to just show up with that business card and the guy at the front desk will let him in. I mentioned above that he's a VP at a regional bank, at that job he wears a suit every day. So one evening after work my father-in-law stops at the shooting club while on his way home. He shows Michael's business card to the guy working the front desk who then pages Michael on the PA. Someone comes to the desk and tells the desk attendant and my father-in-law that Michael is not there at the time but was on his way as that person had spoken with Michael a few minutes earlier on the phone. That's fine, my father-in-law is happy to wait and asks if he can look around as he waits. This is where he got his first clue that a case of mistaken identity was underway. The desk attendant and the other member slash worker slash whatever give each other the side eye and reply Sure, you can have a look around. Now my father-in-law is not a stranger to this sort of club. He has been to them before. He walks over to the viewing window for the indoor pistol range, has a look around, nods to the attendant and watches people shoot. 
He walks over to the wall of lockers, opens an unlocked one and decides it seems sturdy and secure. At this time another member slash worker slash whatever walks up and asks if my father-in-law has any questions or needs anything and gets the reply that my father-in-law is looking around while waiting for Michael. My father-in-law walks out to the trap slash skeet range and watches for a while. Then walks over to the tactical shooting range, he had not seen one like that before, so he spent some time watching. While he is out there, yet another person approaches him and asks if he has any questions or concerns. He comes back inside and goes towards the gunsmith desk, stopping on the way to read a poster concerning ammunition purchases at the club. At this time, he noticed Michael walk in and the front desk attendant points him directly to my father-in-law. Michael laughs out loud and walks over to my father-in-law. When he reaches him, Michael tells my father-in-law that the front desk staff had called him earlier and advised that a guy who looked like he might be an ATF agent was waiting to speak to him at the club. Then Michael had gotten three other calls from members who were concerned that the man in the suit was informally inspecting their facility while waiting for him and wanted Michael to get there in a hurry to handle the situation. Michael announces out loud to anyone within earshot, this is Bill, he's not ATF, he's a prospective member. So my father inspecting the club. Eyes were rolled, groans were uttered and my father-in-law joined the club a couple weeks later. It's interesting, some people in the comments mentioned, if you own a suit or a pair of scrubs or a high-vis vest or a delivery bag and apron, then you can get into so many places because people would suspect, for example, that you are a delivery guy. Karen tries to order pizza from me while I am eating pizza myself, then refuses to believe I don't work there. For context, I work at a chain bakery that has a bright blue polo shirt and khaki colored pants as the uniform with the bakery's logo embroidered on one of the sleeves. If you can guess the name of that bakery correctly in the comments, you will get 395 ripe points. Anyway, coming home from work on the bus, there's a small plaza at the stop before mine that has some pretty bomb pizza. And every once in a while I would stop by the plaza to grab some and walk the rest of the way home. The uniform there is a fire truck red t-shirt with the logo completely covering the back and black pants. If someone can tell me how Karen got this mixed up, I would love to know. The cast is me, Pizza Girl PG, Manager M and Karen K. Anyway, here's the story. On this great day, I was running on 3 to 4 hours of sleep, a cheese croissant and coffee had just gotten off an 8 to 15 o'clock shift and had not had time to grab lunch while on break, so suffice to say I was hungry. Hungry enough that I did not even care that I was still in my work uniform. I just wanted some food pronto. So I stopped by the pizza parlor, grabbed a slice, some Mountain Dew and a cookie for the road and sat down a happy customer. I had my headphones in and was scrolling through my phone while I ate when the staff disappeared behind the counter. No biggie. About a minute later Karen walks in. It was just me in the place at the time and the staff was still in the kitchen. The most attention I gave her was a quick glance before looking back to my phone and taking another sip of my pop. I assumed she would just go up to the counter and order, you know, like a normal person, but I assumed wrong. Before I knew it, she was standing right beside my table and giving me that good old disapproving stare only Karens are capable of. This was our interaction as follows. Me taking an earbud out and lowering my volume, can I help you? Karen, hey, can I get a... starts listing her order. Me, catching on pretty quickly, oh sorry, but I don't work here. Karen, pauses as if this information was too large of a worldview shift for her to process and in the end her brain could just not compute. Karen, first, don't interrupt me, that's very rude. Second, that's uniform, this is an establishment, I know you work here, so don't give me that attitude. The logic of this Karen made my own brain short circuit and I guess it showed on my face because the next thing I knew her jaw dropped in shock and she was railing me on my horrendous work ethic and berating me over wearing headphones on the job and eating the product that's meant for the customers. 
She even went as far as to say that I had made a huge mistake as she was a regular and had more than enough leeway to get me fired. Side note, if she was a regular, she would have known what the uniform looked like. Shake my head. It was around this point that I remembered the logo on my sleeve and just wordlessly turned my arm and pointed at it. Karen stops yelling long enough to give it a proper look and I could see the color just drain from her face. I am a petty little guy though, so to rub salt into the wound I tacked on a not so friendly, see that? Company name. What was this place called again? And then, not two seconds later, an actual staff member shows up behind Karen and asks if there's a problem. I thought that was the end of it. Karen, yeah, there's a problem. Your coworker was extremely rude to me. Yep, that's right. Karen was still insisting that I work there. Pizza Girl looks at me and recognizes me as the girl she had just served. Pizza Girl, a uh, ma'am, she doesn't work here. Karen, don't lie to me, I want to see a manager. Pizza Girl goes to get her manager, all the while Karen is giving me the snobbiest death glare I've ever gotten in my life. I just sighed and took another sip of my pop. Then PG and her manager come back out. Manager, hi, what is the problem here? Karen, that girl refused to take my order and was extremely rude to me, you need to discipline her. Manager, same as PG, looks at me and knows I don't work for her. She doesn't work here ma'am, but I can take your order if you like. Finally, Karen leaves me alone and follows the manager to place her order. I could hear her complaining about me though, so I started packing up my things to eat my pizza at home and in peace. Pizza Girl stopped me though, handing me a takeout bag with another slice, garlic dip and a cookie. She said it was both an apology for having to deal with Karen and a thank you for being one of their nicer regulars. Still puts a smile on my face and this was yesterday. On my way out though, I heard Karen demanding a free pizza. I hope those guys turned out okay. By the way guys, I think I have not asked this before. I would be very interested in hearing about the best pizza places in your hometown. So basically, I can make a list when I go to the US and whenever I'm in a city that you guys are in, I can check out some of the best local recommendations. So feel free to give me some pizza recommendations in the comments. Unfortunately, this is the last story for today. I hope you enjoyed the content and if you did, don't forget to leave a like for me and a comment. Thank you very much for your support and I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.